Hello everybody, welcome back to Flash Tutorials with Alan Becker. Today I'm going to tell you and teach you how to make a three-dimensional looking room. It is an illusion, of course, even though there is a 3D feature in uh, Flash. Um, it's pretty complicated and a lot harder to use than most 3D programs, so I'm going to teach you how to do this. how you can make a simple um, pan um, of your camera and make it look like it's rising up or moving from side to side or top to bottom or whatever you want so once you have um, your thing moving you can add stuff to it like your characters if you want and then make it look like they're really in a three-dimensional space you can add stuff in the background and that stuff will look realistic because it's separated from the rest of it. You can add stuff in the foreground too if you want, whatever you want, you know. So um, yeah, let's 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 um, let's try to do that ourselves. So I mean, you can um, make whatever you want. The the principle or the 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 only thing you need to keep in mind is that it just requires a back plane, a side plane, and a bottom plane. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, whatever you do is possible. So let's take our square tool, or rectangle tool, and turn off the fill by clicking this and go to this button right here. And then um, make a square, and uh, let's see, take your line tool, and drag it out and drag it out and drag it out okay let me undo that because I forgot to turn on snap to objects and let's see I'm going to do this make it move out and move it out and move it out and do that and do that so this way it'll snap to that point right there okay so we want this to be bigger so I'm going to double click it hit Q and then zoom out with uh, control plus or minus and then hold down shift and drag it out so that it encompasses our viewing area okay so if you notice here there's a lot of overlap or potential um, like the wall gets lost right here it, it starts out flat right but then <clears throat> you lose parts of it right here so just make it bigger bigger than your stage Okay, so um, <clears throat> this plane can be anything like a background, uh, like trees or hills or mountains, or it could just be a wall. So I'm um, just going to make it a wall. I take the fill tool and fill it in gray, make it a different color for the side wall and a different color for the bottom wall or floor. So um, next we gotta just turn them into symbols. I'm just gonna delete the lines by double clicking the lines, um, double clicking the lines and deleting. And then I take this wall, F8, call it wall one. And then take this wall or floor and call it wall two. And take this one, F8, wall three. Okay, so an important thing to remember is that when you move things or change the shape of them, they will scale or move according to this registration point right here or if I hit Q this little this little circle that you can move around so you know, if, if I'm rotating it it's going to rotate around that point but if I move this here it's going to rotate around this point so it's very important that we move them to the um, to the point that matters the most which is right here because if there's any um, incongruencies or um, things getting uh, off alignment, then you'll notice it right here because it's where everything meets. So I'm going to move all of the points to the center. This one won't matter because it's not going to be shaped or anything, but I'm just going to do it anyway. So um, let's say I want to make the camera go from here to here. So if that happens, then I need to move this one that way and then make this one scale scale this way and then make this one skew 
Um, but first, I need to select all of these, right click, and hit distribute to layers. Otherwise, we won't be able to move them because they need to be on separate layers. I delete the, the empty layer and then I give it some room and then I press F6. So first I'm going to move the wall by holding on shift and pressing the arrow key and then I'm going to um, take this and then move it until it is aligned with that corner. Then I have to scale it in so that it looks good. And then um, this one I just need to move and then I need to scale or skew it this way. So in this case it doesn't matter so much because there's not really any texture or information on these walls so you won't really be able to tell if I moved it or scaled it or anything. But it's uh, you need to do it. So I'm going to select all these layers hit create classic tween and then see what we get there we go we get a simple pan so just to um, make it more um, obvious that it's 3d I'm going to go in here and then draw something on it and then draw something on this one and see that looks very 3D because there's something that's something else that's skewing in it. Um, so let's say that we wanted it to go from top to bottom. Well, <clears throat> it's the same principle. Instead of scaling this one, we would skew it. And instead of skewing this one, we would scale it. So let's um, get rid of this tween and then remove these frames or clear keyframe and then make a new one by pressing F6. So in this case we want to move it from from top to bottom or make um, or maybe the camera is moving bottom to top so that means that this would move down and um, we move that down we move this one down as well until it reaches that and then we scale it. I press Q and then I scale it up like that. Scale it maybe like that. And then move this one down and then skew it. If I go to the side then of course there's this little icon that makes it skew and then we do it until it lines up perfectly. So I right click and go to classic tween. There we go. So in this case, it goes off the screen, so um, maybe I'll just move them up a little bit. Yeah, so it's just a simple angle change. Yep. So let's see what happens if I were to um, change the registration mark. Well, first of all, if, if the registration mark is different from frame to frame, you're going to get this really weird thing going on. It's going to do that because it's in this one it's aligning to this point, but in this one it's aligning to this point, so it's going to think that the center is here when it's here. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to make them here and see what difference it makes. Apparently, it does not make much of a difference, but let's try this one. Move them both to the center. Yep, it still doesn't make much of a difference, but you'll find out that it does. Just saying. Um, so if I go back to this uh, room here, I have another scene in here. If I go here and click New uh, Scene 2, I've also created a um, example of how you can make cubes, cube shapes or buildings, look like they're moving like that. So it's the same principle you have the flat plane that's facing you, you have the side plane that gets scaled, and you have the top plane that gets skewed. So if you look at my timeline, you'll notice that I have multiple keyframes in between here. The reason is because um, when you skew, it actually um, warps it a little bit. If you, actually, if you look at um, the one that skews here, uh, 
doesn't change actually. But if I if you if you go here, okay, let me um clear this keyframe so that I erase the work that I did. So watch this. Yeah, so when you skew oftentimes you'll get uh, a weird uh, wonky like rising and falling. So I tried experimenting with changing the registration uh, point around but uh, no matter what it seems to do the same thing. Yeah, so my fix was to just make an extra keyframe here and then fix it by doing that. So I did that and then I still get like a, a bounce. So I just did it again. And you can do it as many times as you need to make it look smooth. So I found that that was just the, the easier the easiest way or probably not the the, uh, the correct way to fix the problem but close enough. So um yeah, you can make these buildings or whatever you want. Um, if you want it to do a full, like, full turn like you see both sides, then you'd have to play around a little bit more. So let's say that um, this one was approaching the edge of itself like that. And it was about to go to the other side. Let's make it a little bit more. Okay, so what you would do, oh my god. Okay. So, what you would do is you would delete this at the very last frame before, you, before it disappears and then add it to the other side. So we would probably have some extra frames oh, of it going like that and then this one moving like that and then that. Okay, so let's cross it between that. So since we don't see this, we're just going to delete it here, boom, with a F7. And then once you get to the other side, you have to make it reappear. Okay, so this is tricky. Um, we move it to the other side, and then we reverse it like that. Okay, so um, maybe I'll give it a little bit more room like that, and then put it on the other side and then boom look at that we have our other side so f5 f6 and then move it a little bit more move this one move this one more and move this one and then move this one and scale it out so create classic tween and then we'll see what we get ta-da so anything's possible if you know about 3D illusion making. So uh real quick I think I should show you how to um how to add the things in the background and foreground. It's really easy. It's all a matter of just like classic tweening stuff. So let's say I have um a box and I give it a nice brown. So um, first I have to turn it into a symbol of course. Let's call it dresser drawer. And then I have to simply match up the bottom of it wherever the bottom of it would be in the new the next frame. So if it starts out here and then if we follow the logic of 3D then it should move down. If you look really closely you want it to be about the same distance from that thing you have. So that's why it helps to have some kind of texture on your plane otherwise you're not going to really know where to put your stuff. So 
That was a really slight one. So all I have to do now is give it a classic tween. Yeah, can't really see anything change. So let's just let's make another one of those. Um, let's make this one a bigger dresser drawer, and let's give it a dark brown, and call it drawer. Um, so if I want to move this one, it's going to be moving up according to wherever this is. So create another thing here, and okay, I think it might be helpful if we just draw a little line for ourselves. So if I go back into this, if I double click this, and, the, and remember where the dresser drawer was, and if I don't remember, I can just go back and then double click it again. Okay, with the select tool. Okay, if I do that, okay, my cursor is right where it was, so I'm going to hit N and then make a line. So we might be, we can just get rid of this line later, but we're just using it for reference. So if it's here, then we want it to be here. Very simple. So classic tween and bam. We have our thing. Okay, well, um that is really all there is to it. And many other variations like I showed you um, variations on using this thing um, so I want you guys to experiment with it and have fun and I will see you guys later